oh, this is the harshest thing in sport. It's such a horrible feeling if you are in that pressure situation and it doesn't go your way. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Lewis Hatchett, mindset mental performance coach. I'm also the creator of the MindStrong Sport app. I'm a master's student and performance psychology at Bangor University and also a former professional athlete myself. Today, we are going to be looking at the full penalty shootout between Coventry City and Manchester United in the semi-final of the FA Cup. I'm gonna be looking at those that took penalties and digesting and maybe critiquing a little bit in those that missed penalties and those that scored penalties. And also give you insights and maybe some advice in if you find yourself in a pressure situation like this, what you potentially could look to do and how you could give yourself the best possible chance for success. Just a word of warning is that I am not a professional footballer, but I was a professional cricketer during my past time, so I have been in highly pressurized situations. This particular scenario is one of the most highly pressurized situations you're gonna get in this sport. While I don't know the skills and the techniques of some of these footballers, I don't really need to know them because I'm gonna be looking at how they approach their skill set and how they deal with the pressure and maybe some warning signs of whether they've dealt with it well or maybe not so well and how you could potentially improve it so if you like this video and you like what i'm talking about let us know in the comments if you would add anything or if i get anything wrong let me know in the comments and we can find them there but just to give you a word of warning this game was a cracker man united were leading 3-0 about 20 minutes before the end of the game and then coventry managed to equalize take it to 3-3 they even scored a last minute winner in extra time but got disallowed and then sent them to penalties which is where we find them so let's just get into it and see where we get to and let's go to the first penalty. First up is Man United, it's Casemiro's taking the first penalty. So there you can tell that the commentators were already onto something. They were talking about how calm he was, how he didn't look that phased, and he may have been right. You looked at Casemiro and you think, he looks really, really relaxed. Now, it's great to be relaxed in something that's highly pressurized. You do want to bring yourself into a much more calm state, but you can get too calm. You do actually need some form of anxiety to switch you on. You need that anxiety to pick up where the threats are. You need to focus in on your target. When we are anxious, we actually focus a little bit more. And there is a eventual drop off when you become too anxious and then it starts to really affect your performance. But if you're under anxious or you're under aroused in the state of the performance, then you're potentially going to not be picking up some of the cues that you need in order to execute your skill. And he's gone to Padenka that and he hasn't executed it how he probably wanted to, just a little bit off it. And that could be just because you're a little bit too relaxed. So yeah, Coventry City are already on the front foot. They've saved one and they're onto their first penalty for them. Shocking start for Manchester United. So I already like the start of this approach to this penalty. He's walking up and he's laughing, he's enjoying himself, he's got some form of being happy to be there, like you wanna enjoy this scenario like it is an incredible occasion. So being able to see this as something enjoyable rather than threatening, that will definitely help you. But then as he goes to grab the ball and he gets it and he's putting it down on the spot, you can see him just lock in, his posture changes, he's kind of like zoning in on what he's doing, which is a good sign. Do you see that? He takes a massive breath just before he's about to hit the ball and start his, his pre-performance routine. 
or he's, this is a part of his pre-performance routine, actually. He has put the ball down. He's then taken the steps back. He's zoned in on the ball, what he's going to execute, where he's hitting the ball. He's got to the top of his run-up, and then he's taken a deep breath to regulate his nervous system. That could even be like a reset. That could just be something to really be the last part of the process that allows him to then go and execute it. Now, bear in mind, a lot of what I'm saying here is just best guess. Like, I don't know what these guys' performance routines are. I don't know what they're doing. So I'm just seeing it and just reacting to it and how I think. I would take it in and what I'm assuming might be going on, but I could be way off. But from what you see is sometimes what you get. And this guy is looking really, really strong in his posture. He's looking like he knows what he's doing and knows what he's about to execute. Yeah, the thing that I saw there just at the end was as he was at the top of his run-up, he did not take his eyes off that ball. He looked at the target, but then once he's at the top of his run-up, he is just zoned in on the ball. He's looking at probably where he's going to nail a certain part of the ball to get it into a certain part of the goal. So wherever he's chosen his target, he is corresponding the certain part of the ball that he has got to hit and then to get it there and just purely focused on that. There are so many distractions that are going on for him there, by the way, because they are at the Man United end. So all the Man United fans are right behind the goal. They are going to be putting distractions in front of him. They're going to be saying things. They're probably going to be waving their arms. Some people are probably stripping off in front of him, really distracting him. And it's all about how you can manage those distractions and then focus in on the task at hand. Your attentional control is going to be all over the place. It's going to be wanted to be ripped away from the task that you have, which is hitting the ball, executing the skill of striking the ball. So if you are someone that is taking in all of these different cues away from your main task and looking at all the things that are relevant rather than relevant, it's going to make your performance more difficult and it's going to make your chance of success a little less. So he's done an amazing job there, just staring at the ball, focused in where he's going to strike it, executed it. It was beautiful. On to the next penalty. That was an interesting one. He was looking super prepared at his run-up. And again, this is a really good indicator that everyone's pre-performance routine is different and how they execute it is different. So he was at the top of his run-up and he was focused in on the ball. Then he looks at the target and then his body language was strong. Like his eyes looked really strong and focused. He looked like he was intentional in what he was doing. And then just as he's running up, he looks at the target and he looks at where he's hitting it. And then the last minute he looks back at the ball and he's looking at the ball as he's striking it. So as he's executing that skill, he is purely looking at the ball. So again, people do it differently, and he's probably practiced this, but again, really great indicator of he's focused in on where he's got to strike that ball to get in the target that he has chosen. So again, top draw. On to the next one. This is really interesting. The player, as he's approaching here, doesn't look massively confident. He looks very relaxed. You'd even say, like, his eyes are looking around. He's looked at the referee. He's sort of given him a bit of a sighing gesture. This could mean absolutely nothing. It's really what he does when he sets the ball down and what he does from then on. But it's really interesting that he kind of doesn't look massively ready. He looks very calm, looks relaxed. And you might argue this may not go the right way, but could be proven wrong here. Yeah, you see what I mean? It didn't really mean anything until he was at the ball and then he starts his pre-performance routine. He got to the ball, steps back, he took a breath, you see him take another breath, he regulates his nervous system, and then he was just focused in on the ball and striking it and executing that penalty to world-class degree. To get that ball top bins like unbelievable. So again, shows you that your approach, he could have been saying something to himself, he could have been visualizing, he could have been doing anything, maybe he was just relaxing to get himself in the moment, but then as he's grabbed the ball, he's just zoned in, doing his pre-performance routine, looking at the ball, execute that skill, deal with the distractions that are there, world class, that one. On to the next one. That's much more experience, Dane, and comes forward for Manchester United. Again, 
used to this kind of pressure, should we say. And Collins plays the guessing game, tries to read the intention of Christian Eriksen, who does the job to the minimum of pass, I must say. Again, this was a great indicator of just came up, super focused, didn't really have much of a facial expression on him, was looking purely at the ball, the mark, putting the ball down, getting himself into position, executing his routine, looks at the ball, nails it. Ericsson's a world-class professional and he's executed it to world-class degree. So yeah, again, this doesn't take away the fact that this is really, really difficult. There is so much going on, even with his fans behind the goal, jeering him on, like they know they've got to score in order to level this all out and just stay in, in the penalty shootout. So again, world-class. Also, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and also the bell so that you get notified of any new videos that are coming out. You can also download the MindStrong Sport app. It is the mental gym for athletes to help you improve your mental performance both on and off the field. We've got a range of different exercises, meditations, and so much more to help you become the mentally strong athlete that you want to be. So go and download it both on iOS or Android, and the link is in the description of this video. Let's go to the next one. This is interesting. Ericsson, as he goes back to his team and he goes past this now Coventry City player who's going to take the next penalty, he says something to him. And that, in my sport of cricket, we call that sledging. And you can see this as a form of gamesmanship, but unfortunately it is a part of professional sport. Players will get in the ear of each other in order to add another distraction, add something else that will knock them off their game. You want someone to have many different things to think about when they're trying to execute that skill. So doing something that is totally within the laws of the game that you can do, people will take that opportunity. It's not unlike someone from the crowd saying something and really throwing a distraction your way. It just happens to be on the field from the opposition. And most of the time, these things are not personal. They're nothing to do with the individual. They are just letting you know how intense this situation is. So they could be saying something like, don't miss, or a lot of pressure on you now. It could be something very basic like that. It could be something really clever that makes you laugh, and, and I've had, definitely had that happen to me. But it is just a form of distraction. It's something to just draw your attention away from the situation. So it's something else you have to deal with. And it's why being able to have these mental skills, being able to have your pre-performance routine is really super important so that you can allow that distraction just to sit there and, and focus. So let's see what happens here. That's really interesting that the commentators picked that up, that he said this player's got bravado, plays with an air of confidence. This can be detrimental sometimes. If you bring an element of your ego into a pressure situation, you will try and protect yourself in a pressure situation. You will try and look a certain way. And if you're thinking about how you look, you're not focused on the task at hand. You're not focusing on what you have to execute. So thinking that you need to look a certain way is not gonna actually help you in kicking that ball and executing your skill the way you need to be. So there's a couple of signs there that he is bouncing the ball, he's talking to the ref, he's smirking there just as he is about to hit it. I don't know this guy, I don't know at all. This could be totally wrong, but someone is trying to show a certain type of character, then it does mean that it's just another factor you have to be able to deal with. And he may be able to deal with it. It may be something that he's practiced and it's something that he has to do, but it can help or hinder. It really depends whether you know that this is something you're actually putting on or whether it's truly a part of your personality and allows you to perform better rather than hinder your performance. But let's see what happens. The shot was on target, so he may have actually executed that skill to the best of his ability, but you probably argue he took a little bit off it and yes, the keeper went the right way, so sometimes that happens. This does happen in pressure situations. You can execute everything as you want, but then the opposition just have a blinder. But it did look like the ball, he didn't strike it how he wanted to, and if you put your foot through it, chances are that even if they go the right way, they can't get there in time. It's just another factor that you have to consider, something you have to 
recognize. And penalty kick is a closed skill, essentially. So every penalty kick that you ever take is going to be the same. The, the dimensions of the goal are the same. The distance from the goal is the same. The ball is not moving. It's not an open skill where there's people coming to get the ball off you and there's multiple things in the environment that you have to deal with. You've just got to deal with the goalie in the goal and then try and strike the ball into that corner. So you can practice this. This is why practice is so important because practicing your pre-performance routines over and over again, practicing the execution of skill over and over again, you'll just get feedback and experiences on knowing if I strike the ball this way, then chances are it's going to go in the goal, even if there's a keeper there. But all the distractions that go on, they get in the way of all of that. And sometimes you can just pull a percentage or two off your performance. And that could be the difference between you being successful in the moment and not. And it's just hard luck. And this is just the game. And this is why we love sport as well. Right, on to the next one. Bruno Fernandes there just as he's approached the keeper has again got in his ear a little bit so he's already trying to say something but his head was down he's just focused on the ball he's dribbling the ball to the the spot he's put the ball down there he has not taken his eyes off the ball since he got there and then at the top of his run up he's taken a big breath so at the moment it looks like he's executed his pre-performance routine he's taken that breath regulated his nervous system and he looks absolutely locked in to hit this one He did make that look easy. He's just side footed it in, but he's nailed the positioning of it, executed the skill exactly how he wanted to. And then he's even gone up to the goalkeeper at the end and given him a little bit back. So again, this happens. This is the way we play the sport. Sometimes there's a bit of give in and a bit of jibing in the game. So the keeper gave it, so hopefully he can receive it a little bit. And yeah, that was just pure class from Bruno Fernandes. He was locked in as soon as he got it. So on to the next one. Now the pressure's on here, so Man United now 3-2 up. So while the momentum had swung towards Coventry from the very first penalty, it has now definitely gone back to Man United. They've got the more experienced players, they've got world-class players, and Coventry are up against it. They have not been in situations like this before, so this is a huge pressure penalty. And yeah, this one, this one's probably the biggest one, and a lot of pressure on this guy. Again, as he's approaching, he's smiling, Anana's getting in his face, saying something. There's a lot going on, a lot of distractions here. Again, the, the walk-up may mean nothing. It may be exactly how he wants to behave. Only he will know in really what his best performance would look like and how he needs to be to get that out of him. But this could already have knocked him off his game plan and his execution already. So interesting. There's a couple of things that you can see, very small, but he just kind of moves his head and looks around and kind of his, his eyes and his gaze are just around a little bit. He's just looking around and spotting different things. It's not locked in, but it may mean nothing. It could mean something. It's very, very hard to know, but just noted that, that he was looking, his head was moving very, very slightly. Fernandez, just before, he, he didn't move. He just stayed on the ball and didn't do anything else other than looking at the ball. And again, if you execute this skill to the best of your ability, that's all you can do. That's literally all you can do as an athlete. Oh, this is the harshest thing in sport. It's such a horrible feeling if you are in that pressure situation and it doesn't go your way. But there were just a couple of things that you might say that it didn't look comfortable. It just didn't look comfortable. Now, he again is going, no, he looked like he went for the top corner. That's a hard skill to take. So he's taking a very high risk option. And he could have had a few things there where he's just chosen the wrong option, like the wrong game plan. There could have been some distractions there that took him off his attention and, and the control of that attention. And He's then just always just misexecuted it. He's just not executed that routine, that that full series of events that he needs to execute in order to strike that ball the best of his ability. So there's a few things there. Ideally, you have the best game plan, you have the right game plan, and then you're just judging yourself on execution. And then what causes you to maybe not execute that 
skill to the best of your ability is all the distractions, all of the things that are getting in the way and, and how you manage those and what skills you use in order to manage those. But this is just such high pressure. I mean, this is one of the hardest things you're going to have to do. So I feel so bad for him and, and it's it's really, really harsh. But yeah, this is sport and it's why we love the ups and downs of it. On to, this is now the match winning penalty now. This is the penalty that if they score this, they win. This is the ball over the crossbar. Well, this is going to go down well in Denmark, isn't it? Because Torf had the goal disallowed. <laughs> Ericsson's taken a penalty and now Hoyland's going to take one. Hoyland again as he's approached the keepers come to him he's probably said something to him again gamesmanship take it as you want bit of sledging but Hoyland was looking at him he looked really relaxed but he looked strong in his posture he looked focused and now you can even see in, in his facial expression that he is locked in like he is just head down looking at the ball he's just preparing So there's a bit of a wait as well because the refs had to book the keeper for doing what he was doing. It maybe got a bit too much. But Hoyland's just waiting by the ball. He's not doing anything. He's just watching the ref. He's not moving around all the different distractions there are. He's just waiting for the ref to get in his position. He was looking at the goal for a moment and then he's probably just going to start his pre-performance routine here. There you go. So he's just taken four steps back, took a big breath, and then he started it, his run up, and executed the shot. And because he's nailed it, there was no way he could save it. He got everything in line, executed exactly how he wanted to execute it, and absolutely nailed it. And that sends Man United through to the final. That's a win for United. This is interesting. Just at the end there, Hoyland scores the goal. Ericsson's the only player to go over and say well done to him. I mean, I get the Man United players shaking hands with the commentary players to console them, but there's only one guy going over to him to say well done. It doesn't make sense. It maybe says a lot about the culture of the team. I know it's, it's under the microscope a lot, but you can't deny that he's just been in a high pressurized situation. Yes, Man United have been in a situation like this before. They have been in penalty shootouts in semi-finals, finals before. So those players have the upper hand against someone like Coventry, but it doesn't take away how hard that actually is for that individual. So to go over to him and congratulate him and celebrate with him and then go and console and shake the hands of the opposition is the thing to do. So yeah, from a team culture point of view, that's not great, but as a whole, Man United have got a highly skilled group of players. They've been in situations like this before. They have the upper hand, they have the experience. And there were some things there that you can see from the Coventry players that because they didn't have that experience and perhaps the occasion can get to them, the distractions that come in can really affect your ability to perform under pressure. So there are a few things that you can take away from this so that you hopefully have success in your performances. So first off, you have to practice under pressure. You can't replicate this exactly. You can't replicate the scenario that these guys are in. It's very hard to get to that, but you can create pressure in your training. And when you're doing that, you get to understand how you behave when you're under pressure. What are the signs that you see in yourself, whether it's you starting to look elsewhere, you lose that attentional control. Do you start to overthink your movements? Do you start to really think about what you're doing? Do you maybe lose sight of your game plan? Do you not follow through your full performance routine when you're under pressure? And do you even down-regulate your system? Do you use your breathing? You can practice all of those things, and that's why the only way to get better at performing under pressure is to train with some pressure. So if you're not practicing with pressure, then do not be surprised if you get to scenarios where there is pressure and you don't succeed in it. It's so important that you do it. And for these players, this is just another experience that they hopefully will be able to use and then move on to the next one and perform better the next time. And the ways you can create pressure in your training are that you can use things like consequences, you can use leaderboards, rewards, threats, but sometimes you can even use physical fatigue and it's how you create that pressure for individuals that is really important. You can use the judgment of others, the peer pressure, consequences, 
whatever it is, doing the training, doing the understanding of how you are performing under pressure. Once you're under pressure, how do I act? What do I look like? Where do I go? What distracts me? What doesn't? Can I stay focused? You can ask all those questions and then you can just practice it because practicing is safe. You're not in the sort of do or die outcome moments. You're just learning how you deal with it so that when you get placed into this, hopefully you do well. And again, this is just an experience that something like the Coventry City players are going to have. It's an experience obviously that's gone well for the Man United players but for Coventry City hopefully they can go and learn from it and they can go and improve so there you have it there's everything in this video and if you've enjoyed it then let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd add let me know in the comments as well don't forget to download the MindStrong Sport app so that you can start practicing your mental skills so that you might perform a little bit better under pressure as well all right I'll see you guys next time